two, one. Here it is, the final review of Season 7 of Fragments of Silicon. Oh, jeez. I think we... You know, it... We've reviewed almost a game, at least one game a week on average, I think. Yeah, I think, um, you know, Rough probably Math... Probably usually two. Yeah, it's like Rough Math. We probably reviewed about 50 games this season. Like, <laughs> which is, you know, 50... We do, like, about 50 games a season. Mm-hmm. Like I, I, you know, I'd have to count because there were a couple of um, one weeks there and here, but anyway. So for our final title of season seven, we are reviewing another manga gamer visual novel. Um, we did an interview about it um, on Wednesday. You know, um, some of it's up uh, on our channels. No, it, <laughs> I'm sorry, everything it, broke. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, and you broke down, like, right in the middle of the actual interview, so... Um, now we have backups. Yeah. So it's understandable if you have missed that uh, that one. Mm. Like, it, it's literally in fragments. <laughs> anyway, so... We are tackling Himawari the Sunflower. As we've been noting, that means Sunflower the Sunflower. So, yes, this pulled a Manos on us. <laughs> yeah. Thankfully, it's, you know... Apparently, the Japanese name is slightly different, but it's still Himawari, and they just used the subtitle of the Sunflower, so that all of us gaijin know what the sun, what Himawari means. Yeah. Anyway, um, so... This is a visual novel with quite the history behind it. Um, it was originally a doujin title um, that was released about ten years ago. See, this is oh, this is kind of one of the things we lost in the interview. I didn't get a chance to cover this because everything went askew. But um, there was the original release. And then it got um, an updated re-release on the PSP. And that version is what this current version is based off of. And I, another thing I don't think we had a chance to ask was uh, how arrow the original Dojin version was. Because mm. I... Because I... I want to. Like, I, I, I've seen conflicting uh, information about this. Like the, the original version was more risque than, uh, like this version is all ages. Um, mm-hmm. The PSP game was all ages. Um, but, and I suppose this is important to keep in mind because, well, romance is a big part of the. Um, uh, gestalt of the game. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, so the hook here is this game focuses a lot on space, space travel, the stars, etc. Which admittedly is pretty unique for a visual novel. Um, so, and I suppose my problem with my limitation in reviewing this is um, what I remember uh, from the interview is, you know, the game really opens up its story later on. Because mm-hmm. this is this is a multi-root game. It has yes. Uh, I checked at VNDB. It has over seven endings. Yes, and you will be making choices throughout the game. This is a, you know, so it's not a game where it has easy routes to, um, uh, you know, save. 
like um, I actually made quite a few choices um, in the in like the three chapters or so I played. You know, and you know, it's like each choice will affect stuff. Like this is actually a rarer kind of visual novel than it should be. Like because you know this kind of visual novel actually um, fosters real playability. Although, although, I, although I think they're harder to write, which is probably part of the reason. It's also noted that um, this is a, this is a very long visual novel, um, as as Manga Gamer considers it to be a full release, and it's reflected in its price. Mm -hmm. So, um, I suppose the question is, why did I not get? Some, you know, usually I put in about. 15, 20 hours into a visual novel. I only put in about eight. And, okay, I'm not gonna lie. What I was presented with was fucking boring. Yeah, this game does not front load its hook. Apparently, the story goes some kind of interesting places, but it starts out very mundane. Yeah, I'm like, you know, call it the Final Fantasy 13 defense. Um, you know, the it gets, you know, it opens up 20 hours in. I'm like, okay, but, you know, that that still means I have to get through the, those 20 hours before I get to the real meat of the game. You do know that, right? And that's kind of what I'm getting at here. The front portion of the, uh, the visual novel here was about some of the most bland and vanilla um, anime cliched uh, stuff I've ever seen in recent memory. Like, it's a, like, it, it's a pretty typical slice of life, harem, high school romance. Yeah, space um, club hijinks is fun, space yeah. girl is cute, whatever. Yes. I'm like, um, perverted best friend does wacky things with toy guns kind of deal you know and it's like the real story is you know further along mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just couldn't get invested they give you, know? you some teases in the setting and stuff like 20 years ago in the year 2029 or whatever yeah. uh, a Japanese guy landed on the moon and he was the, si he was the space club's uh, president's dad and uh then he died in a plane crash that you were involved in or something. I suppose what bothers me about that setup is um, it kind of ignored all of the other um, moon missions we did. You know, it's like something a space nut who belongs uh, to the space club would know. You know, it's yeah. Like, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, yeah, okay, everyone remembers Apollo 11, but you know, not necessarily Apollo 12, history's ultimate anticlimax. Um, or Apollo 14, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. People remember like, Apollo 13, but that wasn't actually a successful moon mission, and the reason people remember it is because of that in the movie. Right. So, the point I'm getting at is, a space, uh, like, somebody who's in the space club would know about the other missions. Unless you know, this is some kind of alternate universe where history changed before that. Right. Which is de which could def which could definitely be the case, though. If that's the case, then why use the real moon landing in the first place? I don't know. Right. It's like didn't didn't they give Amamiya Daigo the one small step for man quote pretty much? Pretty much. Yeah. Like I don't know it's a minor point anyway. No. And I said, I'm already struggling to come up with things to talk about here because I, I barely remember any of it. Like, you know... I like the music. <laughs> the mu... Uh, my, um, I like some of the music. The uh, Some of the other tracks almost, like, literally put me to sleep. Fair enough. Like, like, uh, you know, it's like a lot of uh, visual novel music does that, but yeah, there are... There were some good tracks here, mm -hmm. like, um, but uh, from what I see, uh, it doesn't look like Himawari offers an independent soundtrack. I, like some of it was off kilter enough where I could actually give it an independent um, listen. 
some of it um, would be sleep music. Like, um, in terms of production values, um, a pure averageness, like, it... De decent amount of voice acting, and the voice acting is decent. Uh, I'm talking about, like, the um, art and the graphics. Oh. You know, it's like, you know, they look fine. They look um, pretty typical visual novel stuff. You know, mm -hmm. nothing, you know nothing, nothing terrible. You know, nothing too amazing. Uh, I, I will say, I I hated Alien Girl. I hated everything about her. Like, um, she pretty much embodied everything that is wrong in modern anime design. Even though she's, like, from ten years ago. But, ugh. I don't know, I, 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 I'm just really tired of Moe and Emotos. Adam, I never took you for a xenophobe. <laughs> My, uh. Anyway, um, there's, <laughs> um, there's also, I, I suppose, a bit of a trigger warning. There's some humor here that um, probably hasn't aged all that well. Mm -hmm. you know. oh, yeah. But I mean, pretty typical for anime, like an anime derived products. I'm like, um, yeah, the voice acting, probably the thing I like the most, actually. Like, there's a fair amount of it. And as I noted in the interview, um, even the main character ha has a voice. Um, Interestingly, person, his voice actor is the same as one of the girls. Right. <laughs> probably, uh, there's probably a connection there. Tell us. You know, considering um, they've pretty much been foreshadowing that Alien Girl and Protag are brother and sister. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's not exactly been uh, subtle. No. Like, and yeah. And it's uh, who is it? I forget. I I, I guess I do have to credit the game for going for the rare double amnesia angle. <laughs> like, you know, I forgot that I'd forgotten everything. Well, it's more the main character has amnesia. Um, Alien Girl has amnesia. Right. Together they have super amnesia. Mm -hmm. And they will rule Sweeps Week. <laughs> oh. As you do. Like, and, you know, you're also de dealing with um, a lot of conspiracy stuff. Oh, because they were talking about Men in Black just a few minutes ago? Yep. Yeah, and, uh, like, they actually say M.I.B. in the um, actually, voice MIB. acting. So, that, that's actually not a translation thing. M.I.B. Kind of surprised. Yeah. Oh. Um... I, I, I just don't have all that much to say about about this. I mean, if you can, I suppose, endure the more mundane aspects of the product, you know, the um, space story may be your hook, but I, I just couldn't do it. I, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's not like the story is interesting but not very engaging i, I think we've said that before about some of it's our it's not so yeah. much the story it's that it's the character the scenario isn't engaging the character yeah. yeah the, the yeah. characters do yeah. not immediately grab you because and this I'm is like, a visual novel so that's all there is yeah it's like i i i've just seen these kind of characters do this kind of thing way too many times for me to be I'm like the you know the twist stuff is too late for me to get invested, like mm -hmm. you know. I mean, they're trying to get you to like the characters, but just yeah, it's not doing enough to hook you. So. Like, yeah. 
Yeah, this is one of those ones that might be more interesting as an actual anime than a visual novel. I don't think this one has an, uh, has one of those, surprisingly. It doesn't. Give it time. <laughs> I mean, give it time. This thing is like... Seven years old now? Mm, true. Something like that, yeah. Though it does surprise me that the main character can actually die. <laughs> like I said, it, this is a rarer kind of visual novel um, than what we usually review. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, like, if I, like if from a gameplay perspective, it's choice oriented, not story oriented. Yeah. You know. You know. Because I was kind of out of nowhere. <laughs> You know, or a character driven. Like, it. No. I, you know, I will give it points for that because honestly, I, you know, I, I don't see that many, you know, choice driven visual novels out in the world. At least not that, not that we play. Yes. No. So, finally. Price. Uh, here's the other, you know, uh, kind of sticking point because I mean, it's Steam sale time, so it's like twenty-five-ish dollars. But um, the normal release price is thirty-five dollars. That is way too much money for. Yeah, like maybe if it had a more interesting hook at the start. Yeah, it's like. It's asking for a lot of investments um, for a, you know, for a payoff that you may not, you may not get to. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I could probably use a demo. <laughs> I'm not sure a demo would help. Yeah. True. Demos of story, like visual novels, are really hard. Yeah, honestly, if you it's want true. that, just go to YouTube. True. You know, some jackass probably has this fully uploaded somewhere. Probably. But, um, yeah, so that'll about do it for this review. And, yeah, that, and, uh, that'll be it for the, uh, season in terms of reviews. Um, but we still have one final week ahead before we go on break. Um, so coming up on... Do you have MSP ready, or do you... Yeah, this week we should be having Jesse Cox. Assuming his internet doesn't die again. Mm-hmm. Duly noted. So, hopefully that goes, um, right this time around. Mm -hmm. uh, Mac was not happy when that got delayed. Um, anyway, so coming up on MSP... MSP, sorry. Um, coming up on Fragments of Silicon. Um, so, on Tuesday, we got our final um, Tuesday interview of the season. Um, if you recall, we were supposed to have this last week, but um, Turkish holiday. Uh, so, on July 4th, yeah, we're working the 4th, like, but it's 11 o'clock in the morning. You know, who ha nobody has plans that, that hour. Like, I don't plan to have plans that hour. Yeah. Well, other plans. We right. have this, you know, um, um, we'll be welcoming Gallup from Zoetrope Games. Um, they're the ones who did Cornarium that we reviewed last week. Like, oh, um, and for our season seven finale, uh, this is a fairly notable one. We'll be having David Fox, most recently of Electric Eggplants, but. Um, he's one of the, he, he's a veteran, um, very storied career. Um, uh, he's one of the early, he was one of the earliest employees of Lucasfilm Games, LucasArts. Mm -hmm. uh, like, um, he, of course, worked on some of the classics. Um, some of the classics you might not have heard of. Um, like, uh, Zach McCracken and the Alien Mindbenders. I only know about that because it's come up here like five times. 
Yeah. <laughs> AKA the, the LucasArts um, adventure game you probably didn't play. Like, but I'm like, he, you know, um, he, he worked on some of the early, like, he worked on um, Rescue on Fractalus, um, Labyrinth, Indiana Jones, Last Crusade, The Graphic Adventure, um, Maniac Mansion. Um, he, you know, uh, worked at Rocket Science Games. Um, more recently, he worked on Thimbleweed Park. Which uh, is pretty neat. Mm-hmm. And now he's working on, I'm trying to remember, I'm trying to remember what it was. Like, um, uh, give me a second here while I look this up. Like, it, it's not, uh, here we go. Um, I, 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 Uh, also, Rube works. That's it. That's it. Like, um, that, that, that's from his own personal company, Electric Egg Plants. Like, um, no, it's probably still working on tweaking Thimbleweed Park because um, they're still working on, like, the Xbox One version and whatever... Um, whatever other console versions that game is getting, like, you know. so I won't lie. This is an interview that could take the entire um, episode. We'll try to keep it down because um, we spent an hour planning out um, our Super NES mini discussion. Mm-hmm. So, kind of want to get to that. You know, unlike Bubsy, like Bubsy, nobody wanted. All right. And um, as far as um, the break is concerned, MSP will still be going on during the br- two-week break. And um, we will have streaming going on during the break because we've got to keep our um, content footage up. Because mm-hmm. we want to hit affiliate. Yeah, I'll note, yeah, we're up to 45 followers now. So. Yay, Yay, you like us. So we're five away from, at the very least, consideration. Yep. So, yeah. Um, Petty Fan's going to be doing some streaming. I might experiment. I might not. I, I, I don't know. Um, but, so that's the plan going forward. So, until next time, I wish you good gaming.